from glitches to scams to flexes or things that just don't make any sense this is a compilation of every fact video i've made in 2023 so sit back put me on in the background and enjoy 362 things about brawl stars this guy played brawl stars for 24 hours straight and another got a million damage in a single game these are the craziest things players have done in brawl stars the first recorded max mastery was obtained by physic where in only five oh. days after the update release he got his title this was done by grinding in brawl ball over and over again again, since with Mortis you could easily sweep a game and gain the cap in only a few hours. Along with this, they dropped trophies to 1k every day so games could be easier. This required insane dedication and of course insane skill to pull off. Like, look at this bro, that is insane. Almost as insane is how long OG Brawl Stars played the game for. Streaming on Twitch, he was able to gain over 2,000 trophies and completely destroyed his mental state. But he wasn't the only one to do this, Ben Tim 1 did the same, but this time around he focused on knockouts. By the end, he got got 940 wins, 568 losses, and zero blades of grass. This user created Brawl Stars inside of Minecraft. You heard me right, everything from the maps to the game modes to the brawlers themselves, all done in just one week. Best of all, it was playable. The Brawl Ball was a slime, high saves were mobs, and my life is complete. The most trophies on a single account belongs to Hyra, with 84,949 at the time of this recording. That is over 6.5 times the trophy count of the average player. Excusing whatever controversy is in, it is insane the amount of time that it takes. Like I've been playing since global and only have 20,000 trophies, and yet the rewards are still terrible. On a similar note, Shaymate holds the near unbeatable record of 190,000 3v3 wins. What's so incredible about this is that they're wins, so it doesn't include any losses. Right below him, Sang Won Lee only has 130,000. That is 60,000 less wins than they have. And with that much time, I could make 190,000 bands. Not only will I have insane racks, Lex does too, since he spent over $9,000 on the game, and that was a year ago. I guarantee you he's spent more in that time, and that others have spent way more, but there's no official documentation of that. So for the time being, I'll stick to being free to play. Or free to pay. <laughs> That's so stupid. Possibly even cooler is how Mars88 got one of the first self scores in Brawl Ball with Willow only four minutes after her release. Along with this, the fastest roughs kill before his buff. Surprisingly enough, I found this out through a comment, so comment to help me make more videos. Have you ever wondered who voices Otis? Well, Lex interviewed every voice actor in Brawl Stars, and seeing them in person is just incredible. We never really think of the face behind our favorite characters. On the note of voice acting, I've always thought the Brawler's voice lines were a bit lacking, and so with the help of AET Gaming, we changed that with his incredible voice acting skills. I hate middle class. I am the top G. Proven fact, 90% of gambling addicts quit right before they would have hit it big. Eh, Muyo sucks. I love Clash Royale's new update. Like this video and subscribe to Muyo. For Easter of 2023, Brawl Stars hosted an egg hunt event in every showdown match. Each egg gave a couple of power points and gold, and with this, people got grinding. Sangwon Lee got 69, some people got hundreds, and I got 3.5 billion. I think that's worth subscribing for. The most popular Brawl Stars video has nearly 200 million views, being this animation by the official channel. The top shorts are, of course, rank up videos, but what about gameplay? Well, it was actually by A4, who made a box opening video with 59 million views. I guarantee they made back however much money they spent on the video. It's a shame we'll never see another box opening video again though. Have you ever thought about cosplaying as Lou? Well, OJ has, and did that for a bunch of different brawlers as well. Like, I've seen some impressive cosplays, but this, oh man, this tops it off. My favorite is definitely huh? Trixie Collette. What's the most damage you can deal in Brawl Stars? Well, Six Wicks answered this question, where he dealt a million damage in a single game. Sort of. You see, in Power League, if played correctly, you could tie. Over and over again, and using this and a lot of dedication, in an hour and a half and 16 ties, he got a million damage in a single game. Now, I want to see 10 million damage. How small is your phone? Well, OJ and Chief Pat tested the limits of Brawl Stars on the smallest phone. Bro's got the iPod molecule. Well, I'd say it's pretty average. It was really hard to play, and well, just see for yourself. But hey, it's not how big it is, it's how you use it, since they even won games like this. I could never relate to having the size of this thing. Unlike the tiny iPhone, I could relate to the fridge. OJ played Brawl Stars on a massive smart fridge, and it was really quite laggy, but oh my goodness, this is the ideal way to play. Pay to win, I don't think so. Pay to... 
Lunch. <laughs> I don't know. How many crimes do you commit on the daily? I have at least three bounties on my head. Z replays, on the other hand, beat Brawl Stars without breaking any laws. Child abuse? No way. Giant robots? I don't think so. Guns? Well, he didn't use any. Sometimes I get kind of sick of the same Brawl Stars sound effects over and over again. Well, Nubs is here to change that, where he voiced every sound effect in the game, from the music to the brawlers to the attacks themselves. If only I could hear a sweet voice all the time. Subscribe. These are 18 of the craziest glitches in Brawl Stars history, starting with switching star powers. This glitch allowed you to, well, switch star powers. The possibilities were endless, and it was so cool and so much fun to play with. It created interactions and scenarios you would never see normally. Like, check this out, like, what is going on? <laughs> That's weird. Best of all, somehow you're able to kill your own teammates. Like, come on, we need a brawler to do that in duos. These were the peak glitches. Or were they? Because you could stack an infinite number of bow mines at one point. That's right, infinite. Nowhere was safe with bow around, and when they were all activated at once, it was nothing less than beautiful. Dealing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of damage in one second. But millions of damage means nothing when the enemy is stuck in a wall. Look at him. Poor little guy. This is the ultimate cheese, and you just got... <laughs> Parmesan. <laughs> uh, okay, but really, this glitch was game breaking. If you stayed away from the enemy and they didn't have a wall breaker, well, then you are set. Best of all, you could theoretically do this to every single person, so you just have boxes of rollers. I love this. Almost as much as I love the wall phasing glitch. It's very different. It's kind of boring in itself, but what's cool is that this glitch never seems to go away. There's always some variation of it out there, whether it be Daryl rolling in a weird way, Carl doing this, or straight up cheating in Brawl Ball. These are so cool. Almost as cool as. <laughs> These transitions suck. Uh, okay, okay, L look at this. Why isn't that crazy? There have been so many visual bugs in Brawl Stars. Every single update, there is just something that goes wrong, but I'm not complaining. They look cool as heck. This is just one of the more extreme cases, and it's even funnier when it's on a brawler like Buzz. Bruh. This is the best thing ever. Ever wanted a 5v5 mode in Brawl Stars? Well, you're you're not getting one. Because trios and showdown was once possible. And I don't even know what it is about this, but it looks so fun. Imagine like five teams of three all running around, Poco double tank against the Jackie trio. This glitch just opened doors and possibilities for the game that we need. He gave me the two dollar bill, and that's enough for me. Two dollar for 140 mega bucks. This was the biggest bug in Brawl Stars history. If you got this, then well, you were set for life. The amount of progression gained from two to blooms was unmatched. Fortunately, Unfortunately, only a small number of people actually purchased this deal, but on the contrary, a few more people got this one. 49 gems for 49 mega boxes. At one gem per box, everyone and they mama got this. Now, this didn't give as much stuff as the $2 deal, but that's still quite the haul. Okay, so I've always wanted to go back to beta when times were simple and the game was vertical, but now... I, I, I still can't. By going split screen or doing some black magic, the entire UI would change. Brawlers were big, buttons were small, and honestly, it looked really cool. When entering a match, you could see everything for a couple of seconds, and then it went back to landscape. Despite how difficult it was to see a thing, I need this in my life now. Yeah, I never understood why brawlers couldn't go in the water. This is the most innocent looking water I've ever seen. I would die to see El Primo take a dip in here. And like, why can't Otis go in? He's literally a squid, but now I kind of understand why, because with this glitch, brawlers could go in it. And well, they just kind of got stuck. They just look stupid in there. And same thing happened with the Brawl Ball. Nothing is sacred. Whenever a new brawler is released, they always seem to, without fail, have some bug that makes them incredibly OP, like when Willow was introduced. Having such a weird super let everything that could go wrong, uh, go wrong. Games were crashing, weird things were happening, this. This happened. I don't even know what's going on. On a similar note, Maisie and Hank could deal absurd amounts of damage with a single attack. Maisie's gadget was bugged, which allowed it to obliterate in big game, and I don't even know what's up with Hank. Fame in Brawl Stars is known to be pretty useless, right? But what if I told you that you could get the maximum amount of fame in mere seconds? Yeah, isn't that great <laughs> and useful? I don't even know how this one worked, but you know, infinite credits is neat, I guess. Did you know that 81.9% of people use dark mode in their day-to-day -day lives, and we almost had that in Brawl Stars? Uh, sort of. There was a glitch going around, which somehow made Brawlers fully pitch black. Now, this does look kind of sick, I'll be honest, but at the same time, it's better it's a glitch. It wouldn't be the smartest decision Brawl Stars could add. It gives me Jinx vibes. Even though these would be horrible skins, well, this looks sick. Check this out. This Mortis had like a bedazzled hat. This will be an incredible 29 gem skin, and I think this will be a great replacement to these silver and gold skins. Maybe make them like these star skins in Clash Royale. I, just don't take anything else from that game, though. Despite how hot and
and attractive and muscular El Primo is, he isn't that strong. But in this one instance, bro, bro he goes plus ultra. This video speaks for itself in the sheer power and destruction he's capable of. I love him so much. <laughs> and finally, the worst glitch in Brawl Stars history occurred in the most recent update, where after opening star drops, it takes like 5 seconds to load. This is game breaking. Whenever a new character is released in Brawl Stars, they're usually overpowered. Pro player Cory from Tribe had to say this about a certain brawler. Yo, it's Cory, and I think the most broken brawler on release has to be Rosa. Rosa was just absolutely unkillable and took over the entire meta in Brawl Stars. Our favorite plant loving botanist. Now a pretty underwhelming brawler since this meta doesn't necessarily favor tanks. But back then, she was killing it, quite literally. <laughs> Rosa had a shield for 80% damage reduction, which completely overran games. Never in Brawl Stars' history have we seen a tank so tanky. It was honestly so overwhelming, but at the same time, really dull. You can probably guess why too. An 80% shield for 6 seconds is insane, and if there's a match full of Rosas, you can see the problem. Her base attack is a series of 3 punches in a small radius. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then you had her super, which caused her to stack her supers. So while Rosa is only taking 20% damage, you had another super up and ready. All you heard was the faint and wounds in the distance. If you were lucky enough, or rich enough, at the time to get her maxed out, her plant life star power healed her for 300 health a second in bushes. Combining this with her overpowered shield, this made her unstoppable. The whole Rose Apocalypse event caused two emergency nerfs to her. One to her shield, which went down to 70% from 80%, and her super duration to 4 seconds from 6. It well needed a nerf, and justly made her less of a beast than she originally was. Since then, she got a couple of nerfs, such as a 3 second super duration, which is half of what it originally was, less attack damage, and a decrease in healing for her plant life star power. After that though, it's just been some health buffs. Nowadays, you can easily take down a Rosa given the right scenario considering all the tank killers in this meta, like Colette, Chester, or Otis. But at the same time, you can argue that she's a quote unquote starter brawler, like Shelly, who helps teach the player in the early game. Hey wait, Blizz, who do you think was more broken on release? The most broken brawler has to be Leon. Back in 2018, when Brawl Stars was going global, a Leon could have been in front of you, invisible, and you wouldn't be able to tell unless you randomly shot him. That's not even mentioning his main attack. Basically, one or two shot nearly every brawler in the game. It's crazy to think this actually happened. That's right, he was a powerhouse. Leon was the first legendary brawler to be released into the game, excluding the original few all the way back before global launch. The community was absolutely hyped because because this was the first new brawler to be added and especially because it was coming a week before global release. Until it happened, Leon was added into the game. But hey, before that, let's give Supercell some credit here. They didn't have the most experience with balancing brawlers at the time, so a little bit of brokenness is fine, right? No, I don't think so. As Blizz said when Leon was invisible, no enemy could see him until he got hit or attacked, meaning he was the assassin in Brawl Stars, which let him shine in pretty much every game mode, but especially gem grab since he could take the enemy down with the the gems as well as make a stealthy escape afterwards. And obviously he shines in showdown and bounty with his strong single target damage. No one could stand against him. Note at the More recently, Chester overtook the Brawl Stars meta, and hey, why don't you explain why, Jam? The most broken brawler in Brawl Stars right now, in my opinion, is gotta be Chester. Honestly, there's three big reasons for that. His super just has a lot of utility in it. It allows him to do a lot of different things throughout a match. He's got a stun, he's got a slow, he's got a heal. All that stuff really lets him control the field really well. Uh, the second big reason is gotta be the, just the stupid amount of damage he can output. He can output 9,000 damage in a three-shot burst, which is obviously just a stupid amount of damage. Nobody can really do that other than him. And then on top of that, which is gonna be the third reason, is just how easy 
easy it is to land his shots. He just does a lot of damage and you don't really have to aim too much with him other than like the one shot projectile. All those three things combined make it super easy to just play Chester and dominate almost every time you play him. Chester is an absolute monster. He's one of the three arguably all broken brawlers in the Candyland season. And as Jam said, Chester's DPS potential is incredibly high. Upwards of 9,000 damage in three shots. Despite this, he didn't get any nerfs until a month later where he got an attack decrease from each battle to 640 from 720 and his stunning sleeper got a couple of changes to how it works. These changes are happening right now as I write the script, so I'm not too sure how they'll affect him. And hey, speaking of supers, Llama, why do you think supers make Chester so good? Chester is by far the most broken brawler in the meta right now. He could be about five different brawlers in one. Need a shotgunner? Just call Chester. Need Lou with more damage? Just call Chester. Need Frank stun without annoying delay? You know it. Chester. Need M's with Crow's annoying damage? There's Chester. He is good at both long range and close range. And the best thing about him is he is extremely fun, like honestly. As Lama said, the utility Chester has is incredible. He can be whoever he wants to be. He's like, I don't know, Batman. Did you know that there is a secret version of Brawl Stars and that Daryl could roll 23 tiles at one point? Here are 101 Brawl Stars facts I bet you never knew. Colt has the most skins in the game up there with El Primo. Brawl Stars is canonically a part of Mr. Beast's lore. Crow's daggers spin when he uses a super. I guess that's aerodynamic? Frank's attack used to just be four Nita attacks. Now it's cool and awesome. Daryl and Sandy have the same eye symbol on them. Is oh this lore? God. Coach Mike and Santa Mike's dynamite sticks are different colors than in his model. Which makes sense, you gotta know which one's yours. Only three people in the world have this pin. Do you? There are over 350 skins in Brawl Stars. Mask Spike technically is the best gem value skin in the game, coming with 8 skins in one. Brock was originally meant to be a girl, since in the files his name is Rocket Girl. There's also other prototype names for each brawler as well. Pelko used to have a reload animation. Fortunately, he doesn't anymore. That looks really weird. It's better this way. There are 6 free skins in the game. Top Hat Mortis, Wizard Barley for connecting Supercell ID, Star Shelly for the first million people to sign up, and Bunny Penny, Bandit Shelly, and Mascot Daryl for all the new player rewards. Gene was the first support brawler ever added to Brawl Stars. We have rare brawlers, even super rare, but no common brawlers. I guess Shelly could be. Duo Showdown used to be its own separate game mode, and I'm glad it's not anymore. Duo sucks. <laughs> Each power cube will give you 400 health no matter what. Before you hit 50 trophies, you're only playing against bots. Edgar doesn't have gloves on in some pins, and this is so cursed. In an old ad, Spike actually has a voice, and I love it. Yeah, Spike is my name. He sounds so attractive. Mortis's combo spinner gadget can't hit enemies through walls, but can break skulls. Spike is the only brawler with no idle animation. He just stands there, menacingly, forever judging your corrupted soul. Gale's super used to knock himself back. Could that be useful? I don't know. There are secret maps which devs use to test brawlers or map obstacles, like this one. Brawl Stars speedruns are insane, like 84 bounty kills, fastest death, they're all worth checking out. Gale's old star power, second wind, could give allies a speed boost when hit by a super. It was later changed to freezing snow. I think this would be so cool, it's like the old healing ranger for Clash Mini. Sandy hits with pebbles, not sand. My life is a lie. Loaded Rico used to cost 30 gems. You can actually waste all your ammo with Mortis and not even realize it, and that has happened to me way too many times. This is secret Chinese version of Brawl Stars, and it has all these different features exclusive in this version. Rico used to work with plastic ball pulls, and now he uses those balls as ammo. BB has her own unique category, better. That's why she's the best and I love her. Daryl could roll 23 towels at one point in beta. Imagine if he could do this now. Sprout has footprints even though he has wheels. What is this sorcery? Buzz is actually a crocodile, not an alligator. Meg, Pam, and Amber were actually supposed to be males. Now they're not. At least I think. Clubs used to hold 100 members, and now it's only 30. In the game files, there's a secret icon. Ominous. As of now, Chester's the only legendary that can break walls. Mortis is a vampire. <laughs> well, you know that. Bonnie was removed from the game at one point due to a game-breaking glitch. Look at that. That is so cool. Same with Gene. He was removed from the game at one point due to his super. Nita could spawn more than one bear all the way back in closed beta. If only it was like this today. Sam and Belle are married. Colt was the first brawler to go 3D. Brawl Stars beta lasted 500 
222 days. That's like a year and a half. That's crazy. These are all of the current and future trios in Brawl Stars. My favorite is Sam and Belle. They're cute together. There was a glitch that gave M's infinite damage, which crashed games. Speaking of M's, she does the same damage as Shelly. There used to be a feature where you could watch ads for double rewards. 8-Bit used to have a star power that let him revive once. Literally overpowered. B used to have a star power that gave her invincibility once she hit 1 HP. 8-Bit used to be able to hit negative speed, which somehow made him the fastest brawler in the game. There was a glitch which brawlers could swap star powers. It was awesome. Eggpam is hidden in the files, and maybe she'll come back, she better. Mortis is not the best brawler in the game. I'm sorry. Currently, there are 127 Brawl Stars creator codes, but no code Moyo. We all know that 8-Bit is the slowest brawler in the game, but he can get even slower using slow pads. There's a hidden spike sock on the Brawl Pass. Star Shelly is actually the most common skin in the game, since a million people have it. Even then, I'm still gonna pretend like it's the rarest thing ever. Before Brawl Boxes were removed, there were free Trophy Road Brawlers, like Brock, Tick, or Bow. BB's swing animation used to look like this. It's weird, and I hate it. Tick was originally meant to be a mythic brawler. When Daryl was announced, he had a Mexican hat. Now he's a silly little pirate boy. Edgar overloaded the servers when he was released since you couldn't unlock him for free. This caused the Great Edgar Apocalypse of 1997, even though it wasn't in 1997. Daryl had 33 balance changes, making him the most tweaked brawler in the game. Before Nani was released, her quests were in the game which let everyone know who she was before she was released. Leon Super used to be able to make him invisible even if he's on top of the enemy, which made him incredibly overpowered. Shelly soloed the entire Dragon Ball Z universe. This is true. I was there. Tick was originally going to look like this. Now he looks like this. These are all of the removed game modes in Brawl Stars. Some of them are better off removed. There was a Clash Royale and Brawl Stars collaboration for Global Launch. It featured the high safe and you could play as Shelly and Bo. This needs to come back. As of making this video, only one person has made Brawl Stars playable in Minecraft. I wonder who? 11 Brawlers were released in 2020. That is insane. Clash Royale has nothing on Brawl Stars. Shelly's star power was originally going to be a chicken? I don't know, man. Bo used to spawn four mines with his super. When BB's charge is full, Mr. Bat will spin. Currently, the average trophy count is around 12,993. The top 0.1% of players has an average of 46,400 trophies. There used to be a feature where the map would tilt. I just think that's really cool. You can get a jackpot reward once every month for free in the shop. Some are more useful than others. If you delete your account, you won't be able to log back in for another two weeks. I learned this the hard way. Season 1 Brawl Pass didn't have an exclusive skin at tier 0, making it the worst value pass in the game with only 60 tiers as well. But the Gale skin is pretty awesome. In the game files, Jackie has uncensored audio files. Listen at your own risk. Mr. P's penguins have the same bullet as Rico. Maybe they can bounce too? We'll never know. Some of Penny's skins are not up to date with her new remodel, which I hope they keep. That's kind of cool. There's a picture of Poco in Ems' phone. Is that cute? I, I don't know. There were hidden crowns around each map for Brawl Stars' 10 year anniversary. There are 15 brawlers that either feature an animal or a reference one. There are 40 male brawlers and 20 23 female brawlers. And then there's Spike. We will never know Spike's gender. The Vision Gear is the most niche gear apart from Epic and Mythic Gears in the game. There are 10 robots playable in the game, including Meg's Mech. Tara used to be labeled as a skirmisher, whatever that means. Spike spikes that shoot out from his spiky sphere used to go in random directions, making it impossible to dodge. Daryl Super takes 30 seconds to charge up. Brawl Stars amassed around $2 billion in its lifetime. Subscribing makes you taller. It's true. With how long Brawl Stars has been out, there's quite a few features that they removed or never even used. Stick around, there's some really weird ones near the end. Egg Pam. Scrambled or over easy? <laughs> This was an old, unused model of Pam around April Fools of 2020. Back then, there was a meme surrounding Egg Bow, so this was making light of that. It feels like Supercell was genuinely toying with the idea of this, considering it had its own winning animation as well. You know, I kinda wish they added this in. I'm in love. Bone Thrower. I don't know a thing about coding, and this website literally made this video possible, but it has these text IDs, and there are these different assets for this Bone Thrower brawler. There's nothing mini about this gunner. Handy with his massive machine gun, the mini gunner can mow down almost any number of bad guys. Movement speed slow, immune to pushback. It has a minigun, and its super is bandage dispenser. Can you guess who this turned out to be? It it's Pam. And there's another. Deputy Irons. Built to serve, deputized to destroy. His attack was rocket snipe, and his super was called crowd control, where he rained down rockets. I wonder who this could be. It's it's Brock. Unused Shelly animation. This Shelly animation is of her cocking her gun, looking both ways, and wiping her cheek. I'm not sure what this was used for, but it looks pretty sick. 
If anything, I'd guess it's an unused winning animation. That's pretty much all there is for this one. Unused map. This map was only used in the beta version of Brawl Stars. It's super pixelated, small, and actually really pleasant. I love the western maps, and it's kinda cute, but I can see why it was taken out. Like with a Daryl, you could literally roll to the other side of the map. Banners. Yeah, Brawl Stars used to have banners. Not like the ones in Clash Royale, but they were used for exclusive rewards. Star Shelly, Wizard Barley, and items from the support team. They don't use these banners anymore because since the Retropolis update, everything goes right to the mailbox, making them useless. But I would love to see these back in the game somehow. They, they look so cool. Friends Racing Logo. This one's weird. It's unknown why this is in the files, and it was actually removed, but it's a Korean racing game. When I looked it up, I found this, and it looks like a Mario Kart or an Angry Birds Go kind of game. And I have a theory. Brawl Stars is heavily connected with Lion Friends, like there's literally Lion Friends skins in the game. But my guess is that they were trying some sort of racing concept for a game mode. But there's nothing really pointing to that. One of you probably know. Boxes. We all know Brawl Boxes were removed in order to get rid of the gambling aspect of the game. But did you know that Box Boxes were really different back in the day? They looked like this, and gave brawlers even duplicates, which gave chips to unlock more brawlers. An elixir, which was used to upgrade brawlers. Not much else to say, it was kinda lame. Pins! I feel old saying this, but pins feel new. And with that, there's only two unused pins. There's this sweating sad one, which I don't even know what emotion this is. And then there's this slightly disturbing one. It's called default underscore diffuse. A developer stated that it's just an easter egg, but I don't believe it. Figure it out, war people. Tickets. You guys remember tickets? These were the currency to get into weekend events. With the more tickets you put in, the better your reward would be. Which I kinda get why they removed this. Firstly, there were people like me, dumping all my tickets into one game in hopes I won. And there was no real point in having these in the game. I think the way they do it now is a whole lot better. Unused sounds. There's actually a whole lot of unused sounds left in the files. There's one all the way back in the Project Laser days of this robot. Constructing. And his weapon. A few unused sandy lines. <sighs> Seriously? Shh. Go to sleep. Sweet dreams. And cult. <laughs> uh, this will haunt me forever. Names. Brawl Stars has secret little names for brawlers before they're given a final name. Usually these depict the basic mechanics of a brawler, and some of them are so funny, man. Trickshot Dude, Speedy, Spawner Dude, Wally. Flea, Doorman, and my favorite, Rocket Girl. Is Brock a girl? Over the years, Brawl Stars has some features or bugs that destroyed the game, ranging from insane glitches to overpowered star powers. This first one is more recent, the gold shortage. Gold has always been a bit of a hot commodity, but not to this extent. You see, ever since the removal of Brawl Boxes, the progression has never been the same. What came out of this was the ability to purchase star powers and gadgets. On top of that, gears cost gold as well. So to max out a brawler or even just to get it to a competitive level will cost thousands and thousands of gold. I think what's so bad about all of this is not only the shortage of gold, but the surplus of choice we have. You can either buy one star power or upgrade a brawler from power 1 to power 8. Now Supercell kinda knew that this would happen. I mean luckily they gave us a ton of gold for our gears. But surprisingly that was just not enough. Now I'm not advocating for the gambling to come back because it really sucked. But something needs to be done about the gold because it is just crazy. Not as crazy as this offer though. You could get 300 gold for $2. As well as 140 mega boxes. Obviously this was not meant to be in the game and was later removed after a few minutes. But to the 500 or so people that did get it, they got an insane boost in progression. This offer caused the community to go crazy. They should have left the offer up for us poor people who couldn't get it. They should be banned! Take away the rewards! Give us a 280 times deal! And understandably, people were very upset, which is fair, but it's just so weird how something like that got through all the checks and balances to finally be in the game. When gears were first released into Brawl Stars, they were pretty lame. In Brawl Boxes, you had the chance of getting gear tokens, which are about the same as the five basic ones we have today. Along with these tokens, you got scraps from boxes as well. These are what you use to upgrade the gears. Now the biggest problem with these was how expensive they were. Not only and still is the upgrade to level 11 incredibly expensive, but the amount of gear tokens and scrap you needed was insane. Otherwise, the gears themselves were fairly liked by the community. It was just a bit boring. They were often compared to star powers and gadgets, people saying how they were weak compared to them and not unique enough. But that was the point. I feel like gears were and are meant to be enhancement for brawlers when you max them out, where you could succeed just fine without them, unlike gadgets and star powers where you need them in most cases. But that does not justify how crap they were. And with that, Supercell reworked gears to how they are today, along with the gold reimbursements. Do you think gears are better now? What's also an improvement are some of these star powers. These ones specifically. 8-Bit's extra life star power gave him one extra life. Surprise, surprise. What made this star power so broken was how you could reverse sweep a solo shutdown game. That's pretty much it. But even then, it was so incredibly powerful. Yippee! 
I killed eight bits. Oh no, I didn't. Other than that, this star power wasn't used in 3v3 mode since dying usually happened quite a lot. So it was just kind of a weird star power. Incredible in one game mode and trash in every other one. So it was then replaced with plugged in, which is arguably really good. Another broken star power was B's honey coat. What this star power did was similar to extra life. When she was about to die, she lived on one HP and got a shield for a second. Just like 8-bit, it was removed from the game since it created unfair interactions when she should have died, but didn't. This was later changed to give a shield when holding onto the charged shot, which is a massive win. Now imagine both of these star powers combined, with near infinite uses and on Shelly. That was Shelly's Band-Aid star power. Band-Aid was unstoppable when first released, since every 20 seconds when she hit 40% health, she would gain it all back. Now, I'm not saying she was overpowered, but she was 100% overpowered. If you are facing off against one of these, you aren't winning, since she was almost as tanky as Frank with the star power. Fortunately, it was later nerfed to heal like 2000 HP. A more recent bug happened where after the great brawl box removal, some players got an insane amount of rewards from the trophy road that they most likely probably shouldn't have gotten. Now, I'll be honest here, I don't know too much about this one, but some players got all of the trophy road rewards when the update dropped, which included credits, powerpoints, and gold. Some people were even able to unlock the new legendary Chester with ease. Like the 280 times offer, some people were out for blood. We want compensation! Compensate us! Ban them! And compensate they did. For most of the players that didn't get any of the rewards, they got a hefty amount of credits, powerpoints, and gold. But what they couldn't compensate was the hours of time spent with all these broken brawlers. I've already talked about most of these in a previous video, but all of these guys sucked when released. Rosa, too strong of a shield, unkillable. Leon, permanently invisible. Chester, stronger than Shelly at close range. Gale, just Gale, man. Stu, knockback. That's all. Knockback. And Edgar. Who could forget about Edgar? Oh, I wish I could. Brawl Stars has many cosmetics and stats, but some are far more impressive than others. These are the biggest flexes in Brawl Stars. Star Shelly. This skin was given to anyone who signed up for the global launch of Brawl Stars. The first million people to sign up got it. So if you have this one, you're pretty much a god amongst men. It shows your dedication to the game and your OG status really shines. On a similar note, the first year player badges, well, it's kind of weird. Predominantly because, well, no one really knows if this is a one-year play badge or a one-year anniversary badge. But hey, if it's a one-year anniversary thing, then that's pretty cool. If you have any of these skins, that's immediately a flex. If you have all of them, then that's a red flag. These are the tier 70 skins on the Brawl Pass, but what makes them so unique is that they'll never be available again in the shop. So these are insanely exclusive, especially if you have the Gale one. If you didn't know, the Brawl Pass was super trash at first so this just shows you pay ten dollars for bad rewards <laughs> is, is that even a flex if you have every single brawler maxed out then that is just insane it means one of three things you're extremely dedicated to the game you know what you're doing or you're grounded for spending all your mom's money there is no in between. But by maxed out, I mean maxed out. Every brawler, every star power, gadget, gear, if you're crazy. A maxed account is just so beautiful and is a crazy flex. Being in the same match as your favorite YouTuber is just an insane feeling, especially if you beat them. I mean, they're just normal people like us, but the feeling of destroying them at their own job is really fun. Man, I don't even know if the next one is a flex. Having every skin. You're most definitely irresponsible with your money or you're insanely rich. Only one of those is truly a flex. I mean, I never really got it. Why buy skins for brawlers if you never play them? Uh, but whatever, this is definitely a flex if I've ever seen one. Having gold to spend. After the brawl box removal and all of that stuff, gold has been super scarce. There's like two ways to get it and I don't enjoy either of them. If you're one of those people who sit on mountains of gold at the time and can like max out a brawler right when they're released, and hats off to you. That is just unheard of for me. If you bought Gold Mecha Crow or Gold Mecha Bow before Bling, these used to cost 50,000 star points, meaning you had to grind like crazy for these. You only got star points from pushing brawlers or climbing in leagues, and whenever I saw one of these in a match, I just gate my mouth open and go like, WHAT?! The amount of self-control for one of these is just unreal. Having over 7,000 Bling is incredible. It means that before the conversion, you had over 70,000 star points. This just shows your true dedication and it also means that you'll never have to pay for a skin ever again. Having more than 50,000 trophies is just really cool to me. People talk in my Discord about how they have like 69,000 trophies and I'm just like, ah, oh, that's so many! That's a lot of Brawl Stars and a lot of dedication. That's just a huge flex that money can't buy. Rank 35 Brawlers. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you have any Rank 35 Brawler, that means you're a master at them and that's just a massive flex. Only if it's a respectable Brawler. Like, if you're going around flexing Rank 35 tick, 
then you're just asking to be bullied. On a similar note, having any mastery title is crazy. That just means you played Brawl Stars for 48 hours of your life to get this. Forget rank 35, you're a pro at this brawler. Having a creator code is only for those who made it in the Brawl Stars internet sphere. Only a select few have this code and can earn those big bucks from this small kickback. As well as this, the creator gets a neat little icon, just adding on to the awesomeness of this flex. Getting onto the leaderboards is just insane. It doesn't matter if it's local, global, or for Edgar, you cook! You cook on the daily! Just like the mastery title and stuff, you know what you're doing, and you deserve to be up there. Winning a Brawl Stars esports competition. Okay, okay, I know a lot of you can't really relate to this, but it's really cool. You bring back that girl over to your place, and then she sees on a distant shelf this! Oh my gosh, she will be yours forever! Having any of these trophy pins is really cool. Most of them are many years old and weren't the most common things ever, especially these two. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's always a bit of a surprise when I see one of these in a match. No Hat Mortis is one of the rarest skins in the game. The hat contains his true power and removing that factor makes him nearly unstoppable. If you're one of the few people with this incredible skin, I, I'm, I'm, so, I, I'm jealous. I think the biggest flex you could have is a tier 70 skin of a brawler, the day they're released. This means you spent like a hundred dollars for some short-term happiness. And you know what? I can't even be mad. From beginner mistakes to buying skins, these are 22 things in Brawl Stars that you should never do. Okay, look, I get you want easy trophies, but is teaming really the way to go? One of the unwritten rules of Brawl Stars is not to team, but in nearly every showdown match, people are breaking the law. Teaming wouldn't be so bad if it didn't mean that you would be ruining the experience for everyone else in your lobby. Some people just want to play the game normally, and having a 5v1 really isn't that fun, now is it? Spending gems is fun, we all do it. I mean, I probably blown a couple hundred gems myself, but there are just some things you don't want to spend them on, like skins. Okay, I might get a lot of hate for this one, but hear me out. If you're a free-to-play player, completing up to 62 tiers of the Brawl Pass will reward you with 90 free gems, which means every other season you can get a free Brawl Pass. But if you spend them all on, like, Mecha Edgar, then, well, you might have to fork up a few bucks for the next Brawl Pass, and no one wants to do that. One of the first things you learn how to do in Brawl Stars is auto-aiming, and it's really easy to do, but this is one of the worst things that you can do. Okay, on some Brawlers, auto-aiming is really useful, but for general use, manually aiming is the way to go. As you rank up higher, people's movements become more erratic and auto-aiming will lead to lots of wasted ammo. So just aim normally, okay? Thank me later. Gold is one of the most valuable resources Brawl Stars has to offer. It's used for nearly every bit of progression in the game, so don't waste it on true gold or silver skins. Even if you're maxed out, you have all of the star powers, all the gadgets, all the hypercharges, Future Brawlers will be released with all of these things, and it'll cost an entire silver skin or more to max out. Look, if you really like a Brawler, then go ahead, who cares? But who knows, you might want to save that gold for the next Brawler that's really cool. Never ignore your daily quests. Unlike normal quests, these change every 24 hours, meaning every single day you'll earn 400 extra tokens. And that equals up to 2,800 extra tokens every single week. That is big, and that's not something you should pass up. It might be tempting to buy offers in the shop. I mean, look at that value, but I'd advise you to look elsewhere because in most cases, you'll get more value for your gems in the Brawl Pass or Challenge Continues. No matter how starved you are for gold, there there will always be ways to get more if you just wait a few days for a lucky star drop or the next tier of the Brawl Pass. No need to spend your valuable gems. The key to being a good player in Brawl Stars is to understand your brawlers. So many times do I see a Mortis pull up into a heist match and ruin all of our chances for winning. So please, I, I beg of you, play a decent brawler for the mode you choose. Unless it's Showdown, then you can play whoever you want. Bling is used for almost every single cosmetic in Brawl Stars. You can buy skins, sprays, player icons, and... Pins. Ugh. Pins are one of the worst ways to spend your bling. I get that they might look pretty neat, but at such a steep price point, you could either buy a little emote or a skin and a half. It's your choice. Don't forget to subscribe! <laughs> now you have to! Uh, subscribe! Now! Always check your surroundings in Showdown. You should never engage into a battle that you aren't positive you can win or enter the bushes without checking them first. You never know what's going to happen, and it could be either a Shelly with her super or... Charles. Sprout has one of the strongest supers in the game. It can completely block off sections of the map for the enemy, but also your teammates. 
Don't be a bad teammate and block off their path. There may be better places to put that wall. Just use your gadget and put them anywhere else. Don't waste your credits on fame. Fame is the most useless feature in Brawl Stars. It provides nothing more than a few pixels that don't do a single thing. Instead, save your credits for the new Brawlers. If you happen to miss a Brawl Pass season, you can spend your Chroma credits on the Chromatic Brawler you missed. Or if a new Legendary is released, you might have enough on the Brawl Pass to spend. If you really want to get your fame up, just wait for Star Drops. They always give you credits when you need them the least. If you spend money on Brawl Stars, don't forget to use a creator code like code Mario. Uh, oh, never mind. Oh, and speaking of star drops, never miss them. It might be painful trying to get eight wins every single day, but even getting four is enough. You never know what you might get. It, it might just be rares, but there's always the chance for a legendary. And who knows? Maybe you'll finally get that brawler that you're missing or the skin that you want. Don't forget to check your daily freebie. You're guaranteed a jackpot every single month, so missing one day might be the day you get a free pile of coins. Hypercharges are the newest addition to Brawl Stars. They might be shiny and cool, and you might be tempted to save them in a match, but don't! Use them right when you get them. Don't stand around like an idiot contemplating when to use them. You might just die before using it once. Power League is great. Well, Okay, great might be a bit too generous. Let's not make it any worse than it is by playing low power level brawlers. I understand if you just unlock Shelly and you really want to play her, but please pick someone with at least a star power. You don't want to be facing power 11s against your power 3 brawler. If you have an open goal, don't try to trick shot. You've all seen clips where trick shots go horribly wrong. Sure, you might get a cool clip from it, but speaking for your teammates, it's better to win. If you're going to try to trick shot, either go against bots or team up with a team of friends so nobody innocent is losing trophies because of your bad skill. Upgrading brawlers is great, it's so satisfying and we all love it, but don't go overboard. Gold and power points aren't the easiest things to come by, so choose specific brawlers to focus on maxing out, then move on once they're done. If you try and upgrade everyone at once, you'll quickly realize that your life savings of power points and gold are just gone. Don't ignore your brawlers. We have 73 in the game and more are coming each and every year. So do yourself a favor and try out each one. Every brawler has a different play style. They move differently, play differently. You'll become a better player overall if you understand the mechanics of each and can play solidly with them all. And hey, who knows? You might find a newfound love for one of them. It might be tempting to boot up some music while you brawl, but I would advise against this. Audio cues are super important in Brawl Stars. It tells you where shots are coming from or who's around you. Without this, you might not know way Shelly is in the bush or there's an Edgar jumping right onto you. Stay safe out there. Never play Hat Mortis and always play No Hat Mortis, and there's a good reason for this. It's not widely known, but No Hat Mortis actually has a slightly faster Big Dash charge, but it also has 5% more speed. This is obviously because of the hat being missing, so despite it being kind of ugly, you might want to consider using this one. And finally, don't play Brawl Stars at 3am, you do not want to know what happens. From game-breaking glitches to unreleased star powers, these are 100 Brawl Stars facts I bet you never knew. Poco can heal Janet mid-flight. This also works on jump pads. Each power cube is worth two power levels. Ten of these star tokens get you a big box back in the olden days. There's only one Shadow Realm, so you could theoretically play a match entirely in the Shadow Realm. That's so cool. Jean's first star power heals allies inside the Cordelia Super. Practical? No. Sick as heck? Yeah. Way back in beta, you could trick the robots in PvE to chase you around in circles with Mortis. The circus update came early. <laughs> That sucked. It was impossible to kill any brawler as Colette when she was first released. She couldn't even kill a porter. It was that bad. Apparently, Edgar was meant to be a long-range brawler, but the idea got scrapped later on. Thank God. Ruffs was the first brawler ever designed, back when Brawl Stars was known as Project Laser. Yeah, that long ago. Rank 20 was the highest rank until rank 25, 30, and 35 were released. After 15 seasons of free-to-play, you will have enough gems to buy the Brawl Pass back-to-back. -back. <clears throat> Before the changes. <laughs> Bo's rare Rarity has been changed the most out of every brawler. He started as an epic, then a super rare, then trophy road, and then back to epic. Buzz is the brawler with the least amount of balance changes. Not a single nerf and only one buff. You can join a random person's lobby by doing this. Isn't that cool? Look, these are random people. That's so weird. Gene's mythic gear has the same name as his player title. Rosa's bush gadget can break spikes. This could maybe be used in like a mini game or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't if you jump with Cordelius on a jump pad, it'll show tiny mushrooms. This doesn't do anything but it's neat. Gene, Bonnie, and Willow all used the crashed games with their supers on release. Mapmaker had a bug where you could have infinite boxes, though in a match, only like 20 would show up. But it looks cool. Gene used to have a star power called Pat on the Back, which healed allies for 2,000 health when they got hit by a super. 
it sucked. Gale had a star power, second wind, which gave a speed boost to allies hit by his super. It wasn't much, but it was honest work. Captain Carl is the only holiday skin with a recolor, so far. There were a couple of instances of hackers in Brawl Stars. The most notable was shown by Equok, where they used some sort of aimbot and movement hacks. This is just me on a Tuesday afternoon, what can I say? Nita's stun gadget used to be able to instantly stun, so pair this with a hyper bear star power and you were in for a terrible time. Tick's minds used to be random. To celebrate the Moon Festival, Brawl Stars added Lunar Crates and Showdown. These work the same as normal crates, except a lot fancier. I wish they could still do stuff like this more often. Brawloween Rosa was the first skin to be offered in a challenge. That's pretty cool. Siege games used to be super long. They could last up to 8 minutes, but you did get more trophies from them. Brawl Stars once added a mini game called Project Laser in homage to their original name of the game. If I'm not mistaken, you can still play it to this day online. Nani used to have a fake attack outline, making her way harder to play than she already is. You literally couldn't tell where she was going to hit and neither was your enemy. Jessie can kill her own turret if it was controlled by Willow. Bad Randoms was one of the top trending videos at one point on YouTube and Brawl Stars had the biggest premiere on YouTube as well. It's canon that Shelly can speak multiple languages. That's so cool. Ruffs and Pearl are the only chromatic brawlers that are able to break walls. Gus is dead, for real. Brock references Doom with a poster that has the word boom in it. Bell Star is a real person and the inspiration for Bell. Bot Nani can walk while using her super. Bot Hanks charges bubble before before the game starts. This doesn't do anything. Using Hank's gadget and walking near a wall with the star power cancels the gadget. The first ever 50,000 trophy player was Equa. Oh, Sam I has the most voice lines in the entire game. Gray could heal turrets and pets with the star power. It's theorized that Charlie was inspired by Spider-Man in her design. They're both spiders. The skin kind of looks like Gwen. Uh... That's that, that's about it. <laughs> French fries are not from French, they're from Belgium. Brawl Stars used to be in Clash Royale, and Clash Royale is in Clash of Clans, and Clash of Clans is in Brawl Stars, and Brawl Stars is not in Clash of Clans. Penny's entire kit was changed at one point, including her star powers, her gadgets, and her model itself. The investor video from the Season 3 Brawl Talk was removed from the main YouTube channel due to the cost of keeping it up on the channel. Poco Super used to be able to break walls. There were 9 star powers which were supposed to be in the game, but all either were moved or changed into gadgets. One for Shelly, Colt, Jesse, Dynamite, Primo, Carl, Piper, BB, Morta, Spike, and Leon. I can't say for certain if these are all official, but let's pretend they are. The Chinese version of Brawl Stars has real gambling! Yeah! Brawlers have traits which give them passive special abilities like Buzz's Supercharge or Primo's other type of Supercharge. You can apply to become an official Supercell creator at only 100 subscribers. Well, sorta. You can sign up on the creator website and get access to limited features. 40 brawlers can stun or knock back in some way. 20 brawlers throw something in the air in their selection animation. That's 20 more than there should be. Canonically, Shelly murdered Dynamite in cold blood. Oh, oh, never mind, he's fine. Tick has eyelids and he blinks. This is weird and I hate it. Pam uses screws as her earrings. Buzz has cute little pink cheeks under his glasses. There are real fireflies in Brawl Stars. In the Firefly Rico skin, we can see little bugs flying around inside of his stomach. These are real scary. If you click on coins up on the top of the screen, you can see where you can get them, but clicking on power points shows only two ways. If an enemy has 3 HP, Charlie's digestive star power cannot do more damage. There is nothing holding Dynamite's barrel in place, it's held on there by a thread. In the classic Dynamite skin, there's literally nothing there. Two brawlers are not really brawlers, Mr. P since he has a zipper and Doug has his inflatable costume. Meg's mastery icon is not seen anywhere on her model, but it's assumed that it's the button that puts her into her mecha suit. The B2B on Hank's helmet means born to brawl. Probably, I don't know. Barley's mustache shine doesn't move when rotating him, but the lighting on him does. TNT used to be a destroyable object in beta, only found in Heist, but now it's only seen in the tutorial. You can only find this map in the tutorial. It's weird. There are paper DIY models of Surge. I don't know where they originated from, but they look so awesome. I have two. <laughs> Changing your language gives you new button settings. For example, in Korea, you can get this one. I didn't feel like looking at any other languages. Bo's model has four arrows in his quiver, but his mastery icon has three and he only shoots three with his attack. What's the fourth one for? You can see BB chewing. It's really quite unsettling. Part of Daryl's gun clips into his hat. The only brawlers with dashes in their names are robots, 8-bits and RT. Back in beta, gems used to have different names. Subscribing guarantees a legendary star drop. Try it out. Throughout the entire 
higher trophy road, you can get 8,835 power points, 32,985 coins, and 10,970 credits. The old man from the WKBRL thing stated that spinning actually negates the effects of the Star Park crowns. These things. The angry pins of Brawlers with animals have smoke coming from their nose. This might mean that Nita and Bo's hats are sentient. The halo you get from gadgets lasts for 83.33 minutes. If you never made a purchase before, you can get an offer in the shop for 150 gems for $2. Now that's a positive money trade. <laughs> Pearl was originally supposed to be either an epic or a mythic brawler, and Chuck was possibly supposed to be a chromatic based on where their player icons are located. Energy drinks multiply damage by 3, which is approximately as much as 20 power cubes. You get 0 trophies when you get 3rd place in showdown if you're rank 35. You can see your XP level if you go here in your profile page. If you made your account after XP was a thing, then you won't see this button. Colt's hair color has the color hex code of EE094E. Buzz and Cordelius charge their super in the same amount of time. Thanks, Wasim. There's an official Ryan Brawler. Official in quotations. Eve and Hank are the tiniest brawlers in the game. Well, actually, they're pretty big. The biggest brawlers in the game, might I say. They may be a bit too big if I say so myself. <laughs> you can cancel Buzz's super with brawlers like Jackie or Surge. Brawl Stars was seconds away from being killed in beta. It was stated in the podcast that they talked about it a few times every week, but Frank said that the game was too good to kill. The Chinese version of Brawl Stars has exclusive cosmetics like halos and wings. Along with these, the Chinese version has a 3D mode where you can walk around and interact with other people. There is nowhere for stew shots to come out of. Where do those sparks come from? There are drawings and stickers inside of Colette's diaries in each skin. I can't really tell what they are though. I hid links for 5 Nita skins and 6 coal pins randomly in this video. I'll give you a hint, just look carefully at the colors. Thank you for watching and being incredible, each and every one of you. Now, for number 100, Kairos Frog. For as long as Brawl Stars has been out, I guarantee there are little things you've never noticed, like how Edgar doesn't wear gloves in his pins, or Buzzette doesn't have cheeks while every other Buzz skin does. Today we'll look at 42 of them, starting with some players who have an extra button in their profile. It was first made for content creators, but you can make your profile picture into a customized pin. This button was here for those people who made pretty... Uh, questionable pins. <laughs> Clicking on power points in the top of the screen doesn't show every way to obtain them, only two, whereas the coins show all of them. Okay, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Neither power points nor coins reference star drops, but chroma credits do? The one thing you don't get from star drops? What? Despite not being needed anymore, you can still see the seasonal rarity of chromatics. You can only join up to five clubs a day. This is in place most likely due to club hoppers. If you sit on the famous screen for way too long, the background will just jump scare reset you. Uh, if you rotate a brower then click on the mastery icon, it'll play their animation in that position. I'm telling you, you'll never notice these features. In the what is mastery screen, mastery points have both words capitalized in the first section but not in the third. Grrr. The name color selection screen is not organized in a color order that makes any sense. It's so close, but it's so far. As far as I know, this is the only pin where the brawler's head isn't initially present. It's like a succulent. When viewing other players' profiles, if they had XP, you can see theirs and more, but it'll say that it's your level and not theirs. You can see the levels of your Supercell ID's friends' other accounts, like their Clash Royale accounts or Heyday accounts. Blizz really needs to get his town hall up. The start of the Brawl Pass is not level 0, rather, it's just a teeny tiny little token. Oh, so cute. When looking at your friends list, the trophy and game mode icons are not in line with each other. The trophy is just a little bit lower. Team codes are only 8 characters long, but you can input up to 15. On the trophy road, you can click the little eye to show a description of each currency. Each and every one. Even if you're at 50k trophies, you might need to know what credits are. In the team up screen, friends and team are not capitalized where they are elsewhere. Ah, inconsistencies. In the Brawl Ball event banner, there's a banner inside the banner which shows a ball with stars on it, where the ball and icon do not have stars. The Power League banner actually has a fun little animation. It switches from blue to red. It's kind of cool. When exiting the skin selection screen on the Brawler screen, the hanger icon squashes and bounces. The little green smiley guy in the top right corner can be accessed through a ton of different selections in the game, letting you join any team wherever you are. Nowhere does it say that you can get bling, gold, power points, or cosmetics from Mega Pig. It's just the basic boring things. In BB's animation, Mr. Bat is angry when she's swinging him around, but when he's idle, he's happy. 1,000 gold and 2,000 gold are slightly misaligned from each other. In the Brawler upgrade screen, stats that change flash and have arrows on them. They also glow colors respected
connected to the stat category. Brock and Buzz, two brawlers with sunglasses, have different brands of glasses. In the Looking for a Team feature, the background shows a smiley dude. This dude is not seen anywhere else in the game. No pin smash, no sprays, nothing. When publishing a map, you can see the approvals as well as the positivity rating of the map. When claiming your free 5 tokens from a new map rotation, you can see the faint Brawl Pass text show up. You cannot see purchasable player icons in the area where you equip player icons. There are 5 faces on the RJBB skin. On a lot of brawlers, there is a small pixel wide gap of color between the brawler's portrait border and their icon. But once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Willow actually sticks her tongue out in the portrait. I can't be the only one who's never seen this. The max power letters and the hypercharge letters are not equal in height. Max power is noticeably higher. In the players not in a team text, there is a little number next to it that states how many people are not in a team in case you couldn't see for yourself. You can see BB Chu. Ems' tongue color is significantly different in her animation than in her portrait. If Chuck were to stand up, he would be the tallest brawler in the game. Okay, I have no idea why they did this, but when looking at the PowerPoint cards, it's clearly trying to show Super Rare, Legendary, and Epic, but they use Primo and Barley for the Super Rare and Epic. Spike is a legend. But really? What? Bo is the only brawler with his bare toes out. From a punch dealing more damage than a bullet to the prospect of life and death, these are 20 things in Brawl Stars that just don't make any sense. Where does Nita's bear come from? Like, at least with the other spawnables in the game, it makes some sense why they exist. Pam's healing station pops out of a box, Mr. P's porters are being built inside of the porta thing, but Bruce? How does he even exist? Hopefully Nita didn't birth him, and it's not like we're in Minecraft with spawn eggs. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, how does this little ball turn into a 10 foot tall bear? Okay, how does a baseball bat deal more damage than a bullet? Uh, uh, wait, not just a bullet. A punch, missile, molotov, bombs, toxins, cannonball, shurikens, and taxes. There is absolutely no reason that this little bat can outclass half the weapons in the game. Don't get me wrong, I love BB, but this is just outrageous. On the topic of BB, it doesn't make any sense why they made her mastery icon so garbage. Have you seen this thing? It is worse than this one, and I'm not even joking. How is this bear? Half naked? Toned man just as tanky as a literal tank. You can shoot them both with 10 bullets and they'll both be just as fine. Bro is built like Super Alloy Darkshine and you know that I'm not even complaining. He is so hot. Similarly, how does this suit of literal armor have the same exact protection as Bo's handsome body? He is flesh and bones. Unless this is made of plastic, I don't see how this makes any sense. Okay, this might just be me being silly, but how do power cubes even work? Like you're telling me, absorbing this green rock candy makes you strong stronger and tankier? This is magic, I have no idea how this works. Like at some point there must be a physical reaction, an overdose of this stuff. Like it can boost your stats by 20 times, I do not think this little girl can handle that. Listen guys, we are not in Omaha, Nebraska. It just does not make any sense why you have not subscribed and liked the video- Wait, that's not on the script. Leon is just weird, he has candy in both his pockets and in his mouth. One, how does it not fall out of his pockets? And two, how does he not choke and die on this? Like if I'm running for my life, then there's no way I'll be keeping a little lollipop in my mouth the whole time. I guess bro is just built insanely different. So like, where do brawlers go when they die? Have you ever studied what happens? They kind of just disappear into smoke. And you don't have to be a forensic pathologist to know that that's not what happens. Do they go to brawler heaven? Are they reborn? Are they reincarnated? Do they delve into the unfathomable chasm that transcends the conventional notions of spatiality and temporality, transmuting them into a tangible substance? We need answers, Supercell. Okay, so where do Janice bombs come from? Like, she flies around, jumps around with her little whiny rockets, but like, she drops eight every time she flies. I need to know where she's getting them from. There shall be no Janice simping until we know where they come from. And like, what about Spike Spiky Balls? Where do they come from? Just like Janet, there's no indicator to where they come from. Do they grow on him? Do they come from his voidless mouth? No one knows, and it may be better that way. So you're telling me, Eve, the mother who loves her children more than anything in the world, sacrifices them for her own life. Like what? What was their decision in making that? Okay guys, what should Eve super be? Uh, maybe they boost her attack or something. I mean, she loves her kids. Kamikaze. What? what? Kamikaze. Yeah, sold! Yeah! Gale's eyebrows are not attached to his head. In fact, they just float there. Like, just look at this. Yeah, look at that, look at that, they're floating. That's not how eyebrows work. 
I think. Okay, so we all know some brawlers have like poison onto their enemies, which is all fine and dandy, but my question is how Mortis and Frank, literal dead people, are affected by this stuff. Like, they're already dead. They can't get more dead than this. And hey, what about Poco? Bro is just bones. A bit of poison won't do anything to him. On the topic of poison, how does Byron's shots heal and damage at the same time? Th there's no way he can change it midair. And when he shoots right through them, they can heal and damage? How does it know that they're teammates? Th the, the Byron! Okay, so how do Rosa's glasses not fall off her head? Like, you're telling me these puny little spectacles won't be blown off her face after an explosion? She must be putting some sort of botanical magic onto them for this to happen. That doesn't exist. Why can brawlers pick up the ball in basketball and brawl ball? Isn't that some sort of penalty? Like, at this point, you cannot tell me this is dribbling. And why are they always orbiting the ball into space when they throw the basketball? Just chest pass. It's not that hard. I swear to goodness, golly, this is now completely accurate to real life, and I am so upset. Set. Why do brawlers refuse to enter the water? Like, Otis is a squid or something. He is made for water. Willow and Axolotl, uh-huh, they swim in the water. Hank, he's a shrimp, I think. They, they're in the water. On the topic of water, how does the water burn? Why can I throw sticks of dynamite on top of the water? Is this even water? Have you ever seen Grom's mastery title with one left hand? I don't know what he's doing with his left hand, but it cannot be good. <laughs> that, that's all. So Griff, the money-hungry guy, uses his hard-earned cash as ammo. He just throws it out willy-nilly like it's a Saturday night with your mom. He's probably spent millions just thrown onto the battlefield. He has absolutely no respect for money. Unlike me, who respects for money, and has memberships for as low as $2. Okay, where does gold come from? Where do gems come from? Like, actually stop and think about it. There is an infinite supply of gold and gems in the Brawl Stars economy. All we know is that inflation sucks. <laughs> Brawl Stars had its fair share of game modes over the years, some of which were better than others. We're gonna take a look at each one and let me know in the comments if you remember any of them. First up we have Payload. Yeah, I didn't remember it either. It was like a mix of Hot Zone and Crack, and honestly, it wasn't the worst game mode out there, though it was the most chaotic. Since you had to stay around this little car thing, there were projectiles, pets, and brawlers flying all over the place. It was super unique and a fun concept, but it just felt too weird. And another problem was that the Payload meta favored certain brawlers way too heavily like BB, Dynamite, or Jackie. But hey, it was kind of fun while it lasted. Ah yes, Siege, my beloved. I miss Siege. It was actually super fun. It was like Gem Grab mixed with Heist mixed with Takedown mixed with Clan Wars 2 Boat Battles. It was so weird and unique, but in such a fun way. The biggest downside was how long these battles would last. It's cause there was always like 3-4 to four mini rounds in a game, so it took double the time as a normal game would. But you did get more trophies, and there was always some sort of cheese you could do. Ah, <laughs> the good old days. But of course, the darn community didn't like it so it was removed from Brawl Stars. I would love to see it back for a weekly challenge or something. But what I don't want to see back is Super City Rampage. Yeah, I bet you didn't even notice it was removed. This was by far the worst weekend event. It's just boss fight, but a hundred times worse. This was the most dull mode I have ever played. The dinosaur robot just walked around like an idiot while I shot him every so often with Cold or Pam. And when he got enraged, he was barely a threat at all. Then the times he got like Bull as a teammate, you knew you lost. It was just so flawed and stayed in way too long. But what went away too soon was Showdown Plus. I thought this game mode was amazing. It's Showdown, but you get trophies whenever you kill someone. What else could you ask for? They added this because people were complaining too much about teaming in Showdown, which is a bit of a plague, but apparently people weren't playing it enough. The community sucks. Though, the community said no to hold the trophy. Hold the trophy sucks so bad, man. Like, you walked around in circles trying to grab this trophy for a few seconds before dying. It felt like gem grab on Mapmaker, and you know how bad that can be. Like, Palo did heavily favored certain brawlers, and was literally just a game of keep away. It wasn't that fun. But hey, the April Fool's challenge was fun. It was like mystery mode, but not a mystery and on April Fool's and a challenge. There were nine different modes. Speedy Gem Grab, Supercharged Siege, Heist with Ghosts, Healing Mushroom Basket Brawl, Meteor Shower Payload, Grave Shift Bounty, but most interestingly, Burn Ball, where their Brawl Ball is on fire and deals damage to you and breaks obstacles. And then Tilting Hot Zone. Tilting wasn't a new mechanic, but it was super interesting to play in Hot Zone. That's all the interesting game modes, but let me know if I missed any down below.